When I was a boy, I wished I could fly. Me too. So did I. Out the window and over the trees. High as a cloud and lighter than air. Then loop the loop and up to the stars. I dreamed about flying all the time. What? Girls dream. Up to the stars. I like that. Me too. Eventually, of course, we dream other dreams. We change. We go up. It always happens. Nothing is forever. That's the rule. Everything ends. And so our story begins. Ooh, that's nice. Supposing all these planks and ropes are now the British Empire. And we are lords. And captains. Mothers. Orphans. Sailors. Pirates. Tropical kings. And use your thoughts to hoist the sails and deck the ships awaiting us this early gray and misty dawn in 1885. A crucial year in the reign of Her Majesty, Queen Victoria. God save her. Who by her grace had only just knighted a new peer of the realm. Lord Leonard Astor, dedicated minister to the queen and devoted father. To Molly Astor, whose mother flew up to heaven when Molly was only six years old. In the years that followed, a nanny was hired to care for Molly and teach her the essentials of young womanhood. While taking her with him on each royal mission, Lord Astor gave Molly a life few girls would normally know. A life that made her insatiably curious, insufferably bright, and pretty much friendless in school. Friendless, ha! Friendless? You mean like- Leave me alone! Orphans! Most useless creatures on earth. Look at them! Cast out by mothers who can't feed them or love them. No mothers at St. Norbert's, only schoolmasters. As much as I hate to lose you, and you and you, I won't stand in the way of opportunity. Here's to your trip on a ship. What trip? What ship? Sorry, I'm lost. Me too. Boys! We're lost! Boys! And so it was, on the brink of a new adventure, that the three filthy orphans, and Lord Leonard Astor, his friendless Molly, and her nanny Miss Bumbreak, journey at dawn to the docks of Portsmouth, where two trunks are delivered to two ships sharing the very same dock. Two trunks, deliberately similar to each other in their trunkness. One of them, containing a precious cargo belonging to the Queen, to be accompanied by Lord Leonard Astor, aboard one of the new ships, a spanking new frigate, Commanded by Leonard's old school chum, the legendary Robert Falcon Scott, captain of the Wasp. Ooh. Fastest ship afloat, bound for the remote kingdom of Rundoon. And the other trunk full of sand, courtesy of me, Bill Slank, captain of this other ship, the Neverland. Oh. Yikes. The Neverland. A slower ship and long in the poop. Taking the slower southern route to Rondoon, just to be safe. And while nobody's looking, I'll just mark the queen's trunk when it's supposed to go on the wasp. Then, at the last sec, all ashore is going ashore. I'll switch them. Get this trunk on board the Neverland, you garbage. And I'll sell these boys into slavery. Well, cheer up, lads. You're off to run Dune to be helpers to the king. <laughs> Food for snakes, more like. <laughs> Crater boys, coming aboard. Make your course, say your goodbyes. Goodbye to who? There's nobody who cares. Which is why I hate, I hate, I hate grown-ups. Sell your cargo, start your play. Adieu, adieu. Stow that trunk in my cabin, you salt junkies. There's wind in the foretop, there's boys in the hold. Jimmy way, Jimmy way, hi ho! Swap us to the manacle! But the foretop will swell, the boys will be sold. Or it's down, or it's down, we go. Shroud the hem, jig the foot. Or it's down, or it's down, we go. With everything safely aboard, final preparations are made on the deck of the Neverland. Call all hands to man the capstan, run the cable down the crone. Heave away and say goodbye, boys, far from England, far from home. A squadron of British Navy seamen in bright, smart uniforms board the Netherlands. Led by one Lieutenant Gregors, ready to accompany Lord Leonard Astor to Her Majesty's vessel, the Wasp. Captain Scott's compliments, your lordship, but could you join him aboard the Wasp as soon as possible? A moment. Captain Slank. Here, your lordship. I'm taking the Queen's treasure to Rundoon aboard the Wasp, but I leave a more precious cargo here on the Neverland. Guard her well. 
Miss Bum Break, bring her to me. Molly, my Molly. Oh, please take me with you. I don't like it here on this ship. It's safer here on the Netherlands. By the time you arrive in Rondoon, I'll have completed my mission and we'll be together again. Oh, a cat! The ship's cat, a lucky sign. Molly, careful! It's all right. Him's a sweet little puss, isn't you? Ah, oh, Molly loves all of God's little creatures. I know you said you don't need me then, Rundoon, but I've got to start pulling my weight sometime. You're all grown up, aren't you? I am. Courage now, promise? Promise. Oh, dear. Just then, the crate of boys bursts open. One of the boys almost falls out. Hanging just above Molly's head. He stares at her. She stares at him. He has an air about him. The look of a boy who doesn't miss much or say much about it. Back in the box, you monkeys. Something about the boy makes Molly feel like she just grew up a little bit. Daughter, a word. There isn't any treasure in the Queen's trunk, and what is in it has to be destroyed by order of Her Majesty, Queen Victoria. God save her. God, God save her. I'll have to move quickly before the King of Rondoon even knows I'm there. But how will you destroy it? Can you keep it a secret? I can. We can. Cool. Cheap. What? Beep. Beep. Burp. Sorry? Blip, blip, I think you mean... Ah, they're speaking dodo. A language known only to, well... Dodos. And a handful of very special humans. Dodo, a fat, clumsy bird, hence the Latin name, Ditus ineptus. Known for its greedy appetite, slothful pace, and sense of entitlement, the dodo was fearless of people and faced no real competition. An eerie mirror of the British Empire at its colonial zenith. Of course, these same traits led to the dodo's extinction, an eerie mirror of the British Empire after its colonial zenith. But thereby hangs another tale. And don't ever take this off or let anyone else touch it. You know what's in this amulet, Molly, and you know how to use it if you're ever in trouble. But what if something happens to you? You need me there on the wasp. Too dangerous. Ow, oh, my Lord, goodness. Lord, my Lord. I am just so tired today. It's too dangerous. You have to stay here. I want to be a part of the mission. If you can't be British, you can go straight home and back to school, young lady. Miss Bumbrae. No, no, I'll be good. I promise. Shut the faucet, Molly. Blubbering like a whale when the whole world's your oyster. Be a woman. Yes, Nana. Soon as I'm done and run Dune, we'll take a few weeks in the Antipodes, scare up some rare bird eggs, hmm? I might even teach you to speak porpoise. Yes, Daddy. There's my little star catcher. Just an apprentice. If I was a real star catcher, I'd be aboard the wasp with you. Slank hears that word, star catcher. But a cannon is fired from the deck of the wasp. Patience, Otto. Keep a keen eye on this bum break. Don't you worry, my lord. We will be British to the bone. We'll meet again in Rundoon. Godspeed. Off you go, your lordship. TTFN. Comfy, Ollie. That's nice. Now. Alf, where are you, you good-for-nothing bucket of scum? Here. Lock these two in their cabin for safekeeping. I'm taking no chances. Wait, Jester. I don't fancy no dainty daughters roaming my deck. Now up it. With pleasure. The cabin can smell no worse than you. Oh, can we have Kitty with us? Oh. Steer clear of the pussycat. Rip your arm clean off. Oh, say the word, madam. I'm on that chalet for a little promenade. No, thank you. I am sure about that. Come along, my girl. Don't worry, ma'am. Alf will see you safely stowed. Thank you, kind sir. No, thank you, kind lady. Your eyes are green as the sea and your hair is almost as wavy. Take me below, sir. <sighs> Lock the silly cow in the junior suite. <laughs> <laughs> what are you sniggering at, you pickaroons? Put that trunk in my cabin. Fur the jib and let fly the frames down, or curse the day you were born. Now, on to Rundoon, you fungus. There's profitable trade to be made in Rundoon. Ha 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 ha! Uh. 
Well, first class ain't what it used to be. Of course, back in my salad days, I was a green girl bringing up the big breezy brats in Brownstone Brighton. That was a tight spot too, and heck on the household help. There was a lovely island lad, a kitchen boy, who cooked a cunning cannoli and a pasta fazool to make you drool. But oh, it, the, it made the master mad. How the mistress moaned for that boy's manicotti. He beat that boy something brutal. But the boy didn't say boo. Point is, we must button our beaks and be like that boy, or my name is not Betty Bumbreak. Now, Molly, I'm sure you're worried you'll never see your father again. And it cuts me to the core, but never show that sorry slank the slightest sniff of fear. There are men who can smell it on you, Molly. And they will make you pay. Oh, oh. <gasps> That's a stupid example if you're going to cry halfway through. Be a woman. Oh. Oh. Situated, miss? Mrs. Bumbrake, Mrs. Sorry to hear that. I was wed once. Dreadful business. Mr. Bumbrake fell off the twig years ago. Left me willed at 40, oh, 30. Is that food? Oh, I'm awfully hungry. This ain't for no ladies. It's for the pigs down the other end. Piggies, can I help you feed them? My Molly loves all of God's little creatures. Not these creatures, she don't. But don't despair. Cook's laying on some yummy meat in the galley. I'll escort you when it's up. Nothing too rich to pray. We girls must watch our waistlines. Didn't think about getting in shape myself. But round is a shape. Sorry? Uh, you, and it's so true, you're quite the specimen. No, I have flabby thighs, but fortunately, my stomach covers them. Best be off. TTFN. <laughs> well, he's rough, but he's ready, that Alf. Oh, he smelt like smelt. True, but there was a whiff of hero about him. Mark my words, Molly. Mark him. Oh, he left the cabin door ajar. I could follow him and help him feed the pigs. No, Molly. May I, Nana? Please, Molly. please. Molly, do not make me come after you. Oh, Molly, oh. Oh, oh dear. Oh, wow. Oh, best bring back that bucket before ooh, Betty Bumbrake ooh, ooh, blows her blooming breakfast. <laughs> Come on up for some poker, Alf. Stop, on pig duty, the rat scum. Going down the other end to feed the swine. Piggies. 
Got your sea legs? Yes, hungry, hungry please, please help. help. Oi! Excuse me, sir. Quick question for the captain. What are you, piggy spokesman? I'm the leader. No, you're not. Yes, I am. I'm the oldest. I'm the oldest and I say pipe down. But I'm hungry. Well, it's your lucky day then, ain't it? Finally. Any good? Better swallow that down quick. Bone up a tea. Any good? <coughs> it's alive. It's worms. He fed me worms. I won't eat that. Please, sir, is there any vegetarian alternative? Back in my day, back in my day, pigs weren't quite so particular. Well, don't hug it, I'll get me. You said you wouldn't eat you. it. Wait. What are you doing? You'll get us a beating. Belay that, you. I'm called Mister on this vessel. Mark respect for a lifetime of seafaring. Don't mind him. He's got a real problem with authority. Ha, huh, so do I. I know worms is rough vittles, boys, but they'll grease your pipes till we set you down in Rundoon. A question, mister. One? Do we have to stay down here in the dark? Just then hands you over to King Zarboff. Is the king nice to his helpers? That's two. I've got a sick feeling about this. I'll think of something. No, you won't. <laughs> in my experience, boys are sadly slow thinkers. What is it? What are you? I'm a girl. No way. We saw a girl once. Ed Master's daughter. It was nothing like you. It was more, ar rar, gonna get ya. Who's the leader around here? Who wants to know? Molly Asta. Dr. Pretorius back home says I have an extraordinarily high level of brain power. If you're so smart, how come you're stuck on this death bucket? I'm not stuck. I'm visiting my father in Rundoon. He has important things to do. We have important things to do. No, we don't. I'm the leader and I say we got things. He's not the leader. You. You. How old are you? How old are you? I'm 13. I'm 13. Wait, no, I just remembered. Today's my birthday. I'm actually 15. <laughs> if you were 13 and today's your birthday, you'd be 14. I only celebrate odd numbered birthdays. Wait a minute, wait a minute. It doesn't matter how old you are. The leader has to be a boy. You know, up our end of the ship, we get served proper food. I can take you there, which would make me leader. Proper food? Really? Yeah, just tell me your names. Why should we? Only that if you have a name, you get served meat. Ted, Ted, my name's Ted. But I call him Tubby, because he's food obsessed. I'm not food obsessed. Do you write poems about pie? To pass the time. Hide beans in your blanket. It's a Blood sugar thing. Faint at the merest whimper of. Get this. Sticky pudding. Oh, sticky pudding. It's so good. Like I said, food obsessed. I'm Prentice. I'm in charge here. Ever noticed, Ted, the more one claims leadership, the more it eludes them? Oh, snap. And what are you, boy? Leave me alone. Sorry. Don't take it personally. He's rude to everybody. That's why he has beatings. And why he's got no friends. And go on, tell your name, why don't you? <laughs> <laughs> what, what's so funny? Thanks, Ted. He doesn't have a name. Been often too long to remember. Gremkin calls him. No! Go on, you and your stupid names go follow some stupid girl. Like we need your permission. Friendless. It doesn't cost much to be nice, charmless. But what about the food? You can be like temporary leader. But only till we eat. Fair warning, boy. I shall expose you utterly. As no one had ever shown the slightest interest in him before, the boy's eyes sparkled and the lure of competition wiped some of the misery from his face. Right. Follow me. Right. Follow mother. Molly. That's what I said. I said follow Molly. The boy may have wished to be alone, but he didn't really mean it. The sparkles in his eyes faded, and strange noises in the dark reminded him of the orphanage. They made him think about... Where's that mule? Here, sir. You are all shades of nasty mule. Look at this filth. Don't hit me, sir. Says Pitt's dirty work. A mule afraid of his own shadow. Be a man. Thank you, sir. Now uncover yourself, you disgrace to the mother that left you. Watch it or you're next. At the mention of mother, the boy heard a wisp of a song he could barely remember. And the shadow of a home he hoped he might have. Father and son. Mother and child. And even with so little ground for hope, still he believed. Despite his distress and sorrow. That one day such home would be his. Home. 
Orphan rule number one. Life is meant to be horrible. Rule number two. There are no orphans in heaven. Rule number three. Mrs. Grimpkin's ugly. <laughs> Anyone who laughs is dead. Mother, mother. Quick, last chance. We asked us do not leave boys behind. Attention now to the other ship, barreling due south at a brisk 12 knots. That fine British frigate, the, the Wasp. Wasp. Where Molly's father, Lord Astor, has been ushered roughly below deck. Captain Scott's cabin, your lordship. Do go in. Awfully cramped for a captain's quarters. No frills on a frigate, sir. Sanchez pulled the door too, that's a good fellow. Where's the captain, lieutenant? I'm no lieutenant. I told a lie. Unthinkable. British never lie. Well, we pirates do, don't we, boys? I demand to see Captain Scott. Well, why didn't you say so? Presto Scotto! What? Ravi! How dare you, sir, release this man. I'll take the key to that treasure trunk of yours. You'll have to kill me first. We were going to kill you second, but I'm flexible. Achoo! He's coming aft! In a nasty mood! A foul and nasty mood! What are you playing at? Pirate, sir! The Wasp is now a pirate ship! Your British crew's in chains below. There have been no pirates in these parts for a hundred years. We've been keeping a very low profile. And you're the captain, I suppose? I, sir. I, sir. You, sir. No, sir. Not me, sir. That's me, sir. That's me, sir. But no captain, I, sir. You lie, sir. Oh, no, sir. The devil himself's in charge hereabouts. The devil, you say? The prince of darkness. Our satanic supervisor. Foul and nasty with a cloven hoof. And how would one identify him in a crowd? By his legendary cookie dust. No, oh, that's how. Whiskers? But his celebrated mouth brow, that's how. Well, does he have a name? The pirate captain they call. Black Stash! <laughs> <laughs> Hello. Oh, to be in England now that April's there. But whoever's not in England gets to see my facial hair. <laughs> now, you're likely wondering, can the fellow before you be entirely evil? Can no compassion increase this for old brew? Brow. Brow. Well, fret not, mon frere. I'm a romantic. There's a poet in these pirate veins. And so I plugged the muse. Oh, but what to do? What style to use? Iambic? Box office poison. Haiku? Samurai? Don't think so. Ah, mind the kid, of course, me. <laughs> Hoppa! I got it. A pirate with scads of panache. Wants the key to the trunk with the cash. Now here's some advice. Though I seem to be nice. I'll cut you. Slit you up one side and down the other so you can watch your own stomach full up around on the deck. I say, Smee, you did explain to me, Lord, that I'm a bloodthirsty outlaw. Aye, sir, but he still wouldn't give up the key. Ugh, we haven't got our nights, me. People have paid for nannies and parking. Stand aside, I'll have to do it myself, or I'm not. I'm not. What am I? Black stash! <laughs> they refer, of course, to this. A pirate with scads of panache wants the key to the trunk with the cash. But tell us about your mustache, please. The mustache? Want to hear about this beautiful mustache? I'll tell you about the beautiful mustache, boy. The trademark nose brush of every man, woman, and child in my family, dating right back to the amoeba. Yet for us, the face village has been, oh, so much more than a lawn on the lip, sir. Tis what we are and why we are it. And when everyone else got out of the pirate business, the star stuck it out, knowing one day my ship would come in. This is the day. <gasps> this is that ship. <gasps> 
So cough up that key, my lord. Not a chance, you spam-faced thug. <laughs> Looks to be about your size, Captain. What the well-dressed pug is wearing this season, I suppose. So comme il faut, Captain. So very comme il faut. I say, Smee, what did the men call me? Nancy, sir? No, the other thing. Ruthless. Ruthless, heartless, and peerless. Guilty as charged. Now give us the key. Never. <sighs> Playing games is for children, Lord Axter. And I hate, I hate, I hate children! Bring it in, Gomez! It's Sanchez, sir. Bring it in, thanks ever so. The wasp belongs to me now, and everything aboard her belongs to me, including this treasure stamp which the Queen Victoria thinks nobody knows about. Silly old Queen. God save her. God save her. Victoria? God save her. Banana. God's. <laughs> <laughs> Here's two things. When I open this swag, I'll become the single most significant pirate in the world. The solar system. Or anywhere else yet to be discovered in the known universe. That's only one thing. And the second thing is a dilemma. A large one. The kind of like escalated dilemma. In point of fact, for a little bird tells me that your darling daughter is sailing to run dune on the southern route aboard the naval nerd. The Neverland, sir. Huh? The Neverland, sir. Sorry, mm. Naval nerd, Neverland, I was close. I was pretty darn close. Speaking really. Hair, sir. Hair, that too. Oh, oh, in just a sec. I know you love your Molly above rubies. So what say you? We take a quick little detour. We pluck her off the Neverland. And you can watch her die. Unless you're feeling a weensy bit more amenable. Huh. Love your locket. I don't know what's in your pocket. Oh, allow me. Huh. Diamond dusted, kippers and cursed. Here's the key, boys. Ta da! He's in trouble. Your neck thing is glowing. And ringing. Don't ask me about that. I can ask whatever I want. I'm the leader. Play off, Prentice. Come on, you have to tell. All right, listen. My father is going to Rendoon on a secret mission for the Queen. What's a mission? Molly, where are you, girl? Down this gangway and keep quiet. Tell me again, what's it called? What we ate? Um, pork chops, pork salad, and pork billy pie. Greatest night of my life. Pork, a beautiful word. There's that ringing again. Her no, it's coming from someplace else. Behind this door. No, don't open that. <gasps> Holy. <laughs> Slanks, cat. Imagine a grown cat in black. <laughs> <laughs> and it's hanging from a string. Of course, the boys don't have to imagine. Because there they are, and there's the cat. And that cat is definitely flying. And those bells are definitely ringing. And that cabin is definitely glowing. Ringing, glowing, flying. It can only mean one thing. Star stuff. Star stuff? Right, nothing to see here. But that cat was... No, it wasn't. Yes, it was. Tubby's right. Your neck thing was glowing and the cat was flying and... You know, it'd be so fun. How's about a bedtime story? What's that? <laughs> Very amusing. You poor things, you don't know what a bedtime story is. This might sound kind of defensive. Hard to have a bedtime when you don't have a bed. Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't mean... Tell you to... what. You say sorry so easy, like the rough patch is smoothed over, no hard feelings and everything's fixed. Well, no, there's dark, a massive darkness in this world, 
And if you get trapped in that cave like us, it beats you down. Sorry, can't fix it. Better to say nothing than say sorry. When it's night and I'm too scared to sleep, I look through the cracks, you know, through the wood nailed over the window and up to all those little stars that I can't reach. And I think that maybe in a hundred years, or two, or three hundred maybe, life will be beautiful and nobody will ever say sorry again because they won't have to. I think about that a lot. Well, that's more than he's said in the last 13 years. <laughs> so bedtime stories, not a big priority, okay? No, it's not okay. It's a gift. I'm giving it to you. Like... Sleeping Beauty. Sleeping Beauty is a good one. You'll like it. There's a kiss in it. True love's kiss. Yeah. I don't know what that is. Well, back to your cabins and I'll play mother. All right, so once upon a time, that's how they always start. Once upon a time, there lived a beautiful, beautiful baby. Sand, sir? Sand? But that's impossible. When you say sand, do you mean the utterly worthless granular material often associated with the water's edge? Yes, sir. I see. Perchance <laughs> you think of treasure trunk sand's treasure has put my practical BVDs in a twist? How wrong you are. Yes, I'd hope to be hip deep in diamonds by now, but they're a poor substitute for what I really desire. A bona fide hero to help me feel whole. But without the hero, what am I? Half a villain. A pirate in part. Ruthless but toothless. And then I saw you. And I thought, maybe? Could it be? Is he the one I've waited for? Would he, per se, sacrifice something to save the daughter he loves? But alas, he gives up sand. Now, let's see. Hero with treasure, very good. Hero but no treasure, doable. No hero and trunk full of sand? Not so much. Now, where is my treasure? What if they swap the trunk, sir? Swapped, you say? Stupid ideas, me stupid, stupid. What? Yes, right there on the deck. 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 In which case? The trunk with the treasure to board the Neverland. Destiny check. What do I know about the Neverland? She's a slow ship, Captain. Sadly slow. And what of our ship, the Wasp? We're fast, Captain. Super fast. Which means we're leading out of our by now, Einstein. Change of course. Hard about. You're behind this swap, Riasta. Or I'm the Queen of England. God save her. It's Sanchez, sir. Hit the barrel, Gretel. It's Sanchez, sir. Burn, brother, brother. I demi que demonio devil prostar. Ah, uh, give it to me, you shrew. You pay peanuts, you get monkeys. Now juice it. The chase is on. The die is cast. The game's are fun. I want that treasure, boys. Catch me in Neverland. <laughs> And as the princess slept, a thick, thick forest grew up and around the castle, keeping everybody out, everybody but one man. Boys? The prince, right? The prince, very good. The prince chopped his way up to Sleeping Beauty's castle, saw his true love sleeping there, and kissed her just once, sweetly on the lips. Mm -hmm. And they all lived happily ever. Oh, my father. Talk to me, daddy. With the wasp racing at flank speed for the Neverland, Leonard Astor clears his mind and tries to reach Molly. Father, are you there? Hello? Hello? Can you hear me now? Can you hear me now? Oh, Father, the Queen's trunk is aboard the Neverland. Not in English, too dangerous. Oh, please don't speak in... Bravo! Weep! <laughs> Not Dodo. Vree, vree, what? Parrots? A flock of parrots? Vreep, vreep, eep! 
Well, what genius brought pirates? Pirates. We've been invaded by pirates. Oh, pirates. <sighs> that hard eye sound is so tricky. Molly, uh, the wasp is bearing down on Neverland. Soon as we catch you, steer clear of Black Sash and bring the trunk to me. Yes, sir. Okay. Don't let me down, daughter. This is your mission now. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Coo, coo, booty, boop, boop. What are you doing? What? Um, get below, boy. If Slank sees you up here, he'll roll up like the... You were talking to your neck thing. No, I wasn't. I know what I saw. Well, there was a porpoise swimming alongside the ship, and it was making those funny noises that porpoises make, and I thought I'd make some too. That's all. So you were talking to a fish. Uh, porpoises are not fish. They're mammals, just like you, or Germans. Then how come your neck thing glows and rings all by itself? Decision. I'm going to trust you. Why? I'm just a boy. I know, pity. You like to look at stars, right? Well, there they are. There's so many. They look safe, don't they? Sparkling up there like diamonds. I like it when they shoot across the sky. Shoom. Sometimes bits of them fall to the earth. Bits that look like sand. Can you keep a secret? I can. You can. Those bits are called star stuff. The trunk in Slink's cabin was full of it, and... Star stuff? Let me see! Oh, no. It changes people if they touch it. How? Different ways, depending on what they want to be. So if someone gets their hands on this stuff and... And they're evil and greedy like Genghis Khan, or hungry for world domination like Caesar, Napoleon, or, you know, Taylor Swift. <laughs> Who's that? Didn't they teach you anything at the orphanage? I was kind of busy trying not to die. Oh. So if star stuff's so dangerous, why are you after it? I'm a star catcher. We have special powers that we use to keep star stuff away from tyrants who try to rule the world. You mean that like Queen Victoria? God save her. And no, that's different. She doesn't need star stuff to rule the world. She's British. <laughs> so you're a, uh, what is it? Star catcher. There's only six and a half of us on the whole planet. Six and a half? I'm an apprentice. <sighs> Just an apprentice. So what do you... What does the star stuff, like, do, though? Well, it makes you want to want to be. Well, yeah, but can you even do anything with it, or does it just sit there in your neck thing? I'm not a magician. This isn't some, like, magic show. Well, I mean, if you can't actually do anything... Fine. Whatever. To have faith is to have wings. Whoa! Satisfied? So the cat was flying. Come on, I want to fly like you, and the cat! Oh, get serious, will you? The star stuff has to be destroyed. You want me to destroy it? <laughs> Not you. My father's going to throw the star stuff into the world's hottest active volcano, Mount Jalapeno. Where's that? <sighs> Rundoon, wouldn't you know it? Problem is, King Zabaf would kill for even a thimble of the star stuff. Hey, I can help. See, I'm going to run doing to be a helper to the king. So when we get there, I can just ask him. You're not going to be his helper. You're going to be snake food. King Zabaf loves to buy orphans and feed them to his snakes. So Grimkin lied. King Zabaf the third is the worst Zabaf yet. Grimkin always lies. All they ever do. Do you want to help? Then help me get the trink off the water off the Netherlands and onto the wasp. Hey, you know what? Forget it. Why should I help anybody? What's anybody ever done for me? You! Snake food, really? I told you to stay in your crate, orphan sludge. When exactly were you going to tell us that we were... That is it. Bill Slank is drawing the line. <laughs> I may not have been born with a silver spoon at me bum, but that don't mean I won't stir me tea with one. Ew! That's gross. Get below, boy. Come he ain't come. going below, he's going over. Let me go, let me go. Zorba promised me his own bleeding fleet in exchange for that trunk in my cabin. I hate grown-ups. Make like a kitten. Take a long, long time to drown. Not overboard, please, I can't. Can't what? Swim! Don't worry, boy, all will be well.
white caps heavy, crests overhanging. Ship at the forward bow! From the cut of a jib, she could be the wasp. The wasp? After us? Better tell Slank. Backstroke is my event, and I do so like to finish first. I win more medals than anyone else except for Daphne Cooper, but Daphne Cooper's a swat. Oh. Deep breaths, there we go. <coughs> you saved my life. Of course. Why? Because I'm the leader. But you don't even like me. The leader can't go about saving only the people she likes. The leader has to be a boy. Only if the boy knows there's more important things in this world than saving his own neck. Like what? Like saving someone else's. They figured out I swapped the trunks. Slank. We need the wasp to catch up with us. Quick. It's the wasp, all right. Sally runs. she's a fast ship. We'll never outrun a frigate, Captain. We can bleed and well try. Better the wasp, Here's the breeze now, you bilge rat. Oh, oh, you want your trunk, Leonard Asta? You'll have to catch me first. Follow the wind, Weevil. Hard to starboard. Starboard? That ain't the one with the big P, is it? Bring me the Sharpie! The boy spins the ship's weir for everything he's worth. He's changed our course. Straight, Straight for the wasp. Wind, wind 47, 47 knots. Gale warning! The ship's wheel careens across the deck and spins out to sea, turning the Neverland hard against the grain and jolting two people in a tiny cabin below. Oh, Alf, we've got to stop meeting like this. Oh, spit me over, what was that? We're changing courses all straight for the Isle of Love. Aww. Alf, I'm still a nana and I must find my Molly. She's been lost ever so long. Cease and desist, sir. Hey! Cut the canoodling. I gotta get the girl, get it? But do come with. Wind, Wind 55 knots. Strong gale, rolling seas, blowing spray. The Neverland crashes into the waves. Bucking and barreling straight for the wasp. Swing in the choppers and reef the expedient. This wind will throw guano something fierce in your face. Oi, do you see what I see, Smee? The Neverland, Captain. She's headed straight for us. Huh, this is almost too easy. I think I'm even feeling a weensy bit guilty. And I'm over it. Up the gunter! Prepare to board! Up the gunter! And keep the Union Jack flying so Bill Slang thinks we'll be polite. So devious, so very devious. I know, silly me. Neverland ho, victory is ours. Well, mine. Wind, 65 knots. Huracano, violent storms. Visibility gone. Horror waves, black skies. Red over white over red. Pucker up, lads. In case I'm ready a minute now. That stupid orphan boy, he's ruined us. Orphans ruin everything. It doesn't matter that we're ramming a British ship. Hold on to your ditty bag, boys. Here comes the wasp. Two ships move toward each other, tiny craft against bounding main. Oh, lordy, lordy, just in time for tea. <laughs> oh, Devon Green. Oh, it's Tuesday, it, bruv? Oh, we can beat her, boys. She's only a ship full of fops. Now, boss, now, run up the Jolly Roger. It's pirates! Come back, you cowards! Huh. Hello, Neverland. I believe this trunk belongs to you, and you have something of ours. Save your trunk, Bill. Get the trunk to Zarboff, and you'll be too pushed to push. Wind, 63 knots. That's 200 miles, everybody. That's, That's 200 miles per hour. Large waves over 50 feet. Disaster, destruction, devastation. You boy, you turned us around so the wasp could catch up with us. Pretty cheeky, huh? Pretty cheeky. Yeah, good move, Ace. And now there's pirates everywhere. He did something big, Prentice. I can do more. 
If you want to help, then help me get the trunk to my father. Sorry, not our issue. Whatever, I'll do it myself. Miss Bombrick! Miss Bombrick! It's different, you know that? Don't you think it's different? We should definitely wait for her up here. It'll be safer. No, there's more important things in this world than saving your own neck. Like what? what? Like helping Molly. Ladies and gentlemen, thanks for coming out on this stormy night for our featured bout. In this corner, direct from Slough by way of Despond, with the intimacy issues and the claggy knickers, he's no mother's son and no man's pal, Bill the Rat Scum Slaying! <laughs> and in this corner, sporting his famous flavor saver since the tender age of 10, the most fearsome pirate on the pike, all hands on deck for the Black Stash! Woo! Yes, Cam! This, this is a one round knockout match. Kicking, spitting, and gouging is preferred. Hitting below the belt is not required. Though the fans tend to like it, we love it! Now, shake hands and come out rhyming. Ooh. Take a hike, you mingy crumb. The trunk is mine, so cast me bomb. Yeah! Oh, I'll kiss you, Bill, with the French roaster, roller coaster, uppercut, a flipper flopper. Ooh, ooh, ooh! But I don't like so behind your backsy, which needs a waxy, by the by. Okay! Oh, me God's anointed, double pointed, triple pointed belly whopper. Oh, good one, Captain. Mm hmm. Oh, me on your kneesy, easy peasy, job and easy battle cry. Woo! Me dog's dinner. Me shark shanker. Me winkle pinner. Me walk the planker. Shall I compare thee to a summer's day? Oh. Here he is, a jumped up cabin boy who doesn't know his place. Now tell me where the queen's trunk is, or say your goodbyes, you bat scum tapkin. Crack, the sound of splintering wood, flapping canvases whipped by wind. Crack! The deck is breaking up. Moss that was, a moss no more. The Neverland. She's split in two. Stem to stern. Fore and aft. A, a whole, whole ship half. Abandoned ship. Abandoned ship. <laughs> She's split in half, made braces gone. <laughs> We're saving the trunk, and that's all there is to it. Don't let him smell your Boy! Head. You really missed the gravy boat, Betty. You and your sea green eyes. The Hazel. Alf, where are you? Oh, Alf, help me! Out of my way! All I want is me <laughs> drunk! Don't you <laughs> <laughs> oh, she's all yours, lover boy! No, My white knight. Molly, Molly unlocked in the broom cabin. Oh, father, we have the trunk. Bring it to me. Abandoned ship. Check your trunks. Some trunks may appear to be identical to other trunks. <laughs> Save yourself. <sighs> Wait, boy, I need more time to get this trunk to my father. All right, Molly, I'll sell the pirates. Some crazy weather we're having, huh? What are you? What are you? What am I? Black stash! Huh, never heard of you. Liar, the stash is on everyone's lips. Why, is that the Queen's trunk you're sitting on? Oh yeah, Queen's trunk, totally. Molly Astor told me to protect it. From who? From pirates like you. But we have all the fun. You do? Absolutely. A little swash, a bit of buckle, you'd love it more than bread. Now, how's about you give me the trunk and join the party? Uh. 
Your appellation? No name. Orphan. Huh. You're more at sea than Columbus, boy. If you were a pirate, you'd have a proper name. You can do that? I'm the boss, ain't I? Now, how's about Bluebeard Bob? Mm. Long John Levy. Mm. Ooh, you know, we hung a bloke from the yard on we could go Wednesday. Pirate Pete was his name. That's available. Pirate Pete? Good solid name is Peter, like a rock. That's what you'll be, boy, my rock. Now give me the trunk. Peter, yeah, I like it. More iconic than the moonwalk in a Michael Jackson video. Now give me the trunk. And what would I do? You'd star in me nasty crew. Infamy, calamity, fraternity. You need to connect, boy. Peter. You need to connect, Peter. No man is an archipelago. Now, how's about you do me a favor and give your captain his great big treasure? Sand again! You blew it, Sash. The Queen's trunk is safe on the wasp. We did it, Molly. We saved the world. You're killing my buzz, boy, to which I say die! Not again! Oh, not again. The boy's gone overboard. Molly, bring me the trunk. But, Daddy, the boy needs help. Molly, this is a direct order. Bring the trunk to me. Help! I can't swim! This trunk floats, boy. My name's Peter. Peter? Oh, I like it. Me too. Okay, ride this trunk to the island, Peter. That way. Molly, no! Crack the whip and crack again. Soap by sea and soap by rain. Soon we pray the storm be done. And when it's done, pray you see the sun. Blow your winds, oh you winds, I'm still the man! You're still the man! Thank you, Smee. Now carry me and all the other stuff you can. Even in the churning sea, still I am the captain, Smee, and the pirate code I follow. One for all, not for me! I'm the leader! No, you're not. Yes, I am. And there's only a few of us that can't be a leader now. Why not? There's only two of us. Jump! Come on, Ted, we'll jump together! Follow that trunk, Smee! Get me to that island! Follow that trunk to the island, Peter, and don't let it out of your sight. Swim on against the current, swim on against the sea. Though the tide may turn against you, though too strong the tide may be. And though your heart be led and flashing <gasps> through the spray and foam, swim on, swim. Before your eyes Now 
Is that you, Molly? I'm coming. Wait for me. Molly, wait. No, not supposed to sleep. Supposed to be guarding the trunk, and what if she... I did what you said, Moll. I dragged it right up a mountain. Nope. No, Molly. Whoa. That must be the sun. I'm feeling you, sun. And check it out. Space, light, air. I'm finally free. Free, free, free. And I'm going to have freedoms, whatever I want. Whoa. Hey, bird, what's up? Me? Well, let's see. Saved the world, got a name, not too shabby. I just, I wonder if Teddy and Prentice made it off before. Please let them be okay. Bird, we should make a pact. I don't leave you and you don't leave me. Deal? <laughs> no, come back. I don't want to be alone. Alone, alone, alone. Hey, you know what? This is fine. No Teddy, no Prentice, no Molly. Nobody's after me with a stick. I can just be a boy for a while. It's all I want anyway. I gotta get out of here. Sorry, did you want to be alone? No, stay with me. Good answer. Thank you. You ready for this? Teddy floats. We jumped overboard and I held on to Teddy and the two of us bobbed all the way over here. Prentice. No name. I got one now. It's Peter. Solid. Whatever. Hey, way out there, you see that little dot on the horizon? I think that's the wasp. But where's Mother? For the love of her name is Molly, and she probably drowned. No, she's like a real swimmer. I think maybe she dove off the Neverland and swam to the wasp, or was floating on what's left of it. Or maybe she's down there in the jungle. <laughs> we should definitely wait for her up here. It'll be safer. Come on, help me hide the trunk. Then we can look for branches down by the beach. At some point, we're going to need to find food. Branches. What we need are branches. Hey, look, I think I found something. Sweet. Ow. Branches, branches. Guys got a Jones for branches. To build a raft, you know. If we build a raft, then we can float all the way over to the wasp. Then Molly's father will have to take us. Where? Home. Everybody hold hands and nobody gets lost. Clear? Crystal. Ew, your hands all sweaty. Yeah, because perspiration's the mark of true leadership. <laughs> Are we good? Yes. You there, Peter? Here. You there, Ted? Present. You there, Prentice? Prentice, you there? Teddy, you're holding on to Prentice? Guys, where is everybody? Vino rosso, gremiano, moscat, pino grigio. You said hang on to each other, Peter. Gnocchi. Where are you, Peter? Cannoli. I'm here, Ted. Gnocchi. I'm scared, Peter. Cannoli. I can't see a thing. Gnocchi. Help! Gorillas! Oh, hello! Who was that? Cannelloni! Chianti! It's me, sir! Ling Vino Rosso, Montepulciano! Hot enough for ya? How do you eat this? Tocca e dolcetto! There! Footprints! Something's chasing me! Montepulciano! Montepulciano! Who's that? What the? Chianti! I'm right behind you! And I want that trunk. Do you want some tea? Linguini. Help, I'm hungry. Help, I'm lost. I'm going to find you. Chianti. I'll find you, Ted. Keep heading down. I'm sweating, me. Which way is down? Just Teddy. Guys, you with me? Hungry, Peter. Want that treasure. I'm the leader. Want that treasure. Help me, Peter. Want that trunk. World class swimmer that they all know me to be. I reached the island in record time. I'm awfully glad I saved that boy, even if Daddy's furious. <sighs> Saving the world's a bit abstract for a 13 year old. Putting a human face on it makes it more jolly. Now, I really must get going, and my first admission will be my last. Peter, wherever you are, I'll find you. 
Vino rosso, Montepulciano, tocca e dolcetto. Primi pranzo dopo gabinetto. Hello, I am king of this island and you boys are my prisoners. Lasagna! <laughs> yes, you three will do nicely. You speak English? If I must. Préférez-je que parle français? But you're savages. We mollusks are no savages. I know where savagery is, boy. When I was young man, English landed here and took me to your island in chains. Many years I served as kitchen slave in not so Great Britain. Then one day, by kindness of fate... A shipwreck brought my father back to Mollusk Island. Yes. In your language, my name is Fighting Prawn. This is my son, Hawking Clam. My son shall wear this hat once worn by my brutal British master. For years I was his kitchen slave. He beat me raw, but I was brave. And one day put him in his grave with a plate of poison pasta. <laughs> Thank you. Come, it is time. Time? Feeding time. Feeding time, finally. <laughs> Not where you eat, piggy boy. Where you are eaten. You must answer to the law. The law of Mr. Grin. Who's Mr. Grin? We worship him, and he protects us from foreign troublemakers. Come, we feed you now to vicious crocodile. <laughs> Wait, please don't feed us to any crocodile. First, first take us to Mr. Grin. Mr. Grin is crocodile. Pasta! Ooh. Wait, we can give you great gift. Anti-pasta. <laughs> you say gift? A story, yeah, a bedtime story. Sleeping Beauty, right guys? Yeah, the thing is, is in Sleeping Beauty, I nodded off halfway through the end. Maybe they will too, and we can get out of here. We give you bedtime story, you let us live, and we leave your island for good. Deal? All right. But if I'm not entertained, it's Mr. Grin for you all. Assume the position. You will have one minute. One minute? What am I supposed to do in one minute? I can't transform. I can't inhabit the character. Bring me the holy relic of my captivity. Here, mighty father. The kitchen timer. <laughs> you have one minute, starting now. Okay, uh, one at a time? Once upon a time, upon a time. That's how they always start, upon a time. Tick-tock, hungry, Mr. Grin? <laughs> okay, okay, once upon a time, there was a beautiful baby princess. <laughs> and a witch with an evil curse. Ah ha ha ha. Ah ha ha ha. Ah ha ha ha. And the curse was very terrible. For every time the baby cried, the whole kingdom would fall asleep. And beauty was her name, oh. <laughs> so the king marched over to his favorite horse. Yay. And he rode over to the tallest tree. And he perched up to talk to the wise old owl. Who? The king. A real leader, sort of like me. Nay. Sticky pudding. Oh, sticky pudding, it's so good. 15 seconds, Mr. Grin. And soon the princess was old enough to talk. Hi, I'm 16, I'm beautiful, and I'm in the market for something long term. But nobody can stay awake long enough to kiss her. And soon everybody got so sleepy. And that's the story of... Sticky pudding. Sleeping, Sleeping beauty. beauty. No, 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 that is not how the story ends. Where do you come from? Goody, another English. And your minute is up. <laughs> you should have stayed hidden, Molly. <laughs> you abused the theater collective. It was too much for me. Molly. 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 <laughs> Although, Ted has real talent. Hey, I have talent. They liked me. They really liked me. Molly. 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 What's so funny? <laughs> you called her Molly. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's my name. Molly. <laughs> In our language, Molly means squid poop. <laughs> Wait. Entertained, mighty father? First prize for squid poop. Two thumbs up. Two thumbs way up. So you let us live, right? That was the deal. Which is great, because we can do all the things you don't want to do anymore. We're foreigners. That's what we're for. 
Nice try. But the law is the law. All English must die. Calamari! <laughs> Such life and death decisions are generally made by the English, not for the English. Worse yet, the walls of Mr. Grin's cage are very high. Too high for any boy or girl to climb. Too dark to see the crocodile in front of your face. And those hard things the boys are sitting on, they feel like bones. All in all, it's a bad day to be British. Teddy, I hope that was your stomach. I want to go home. What home? He made a deal with us and he lied, just like they always do. Prentice, you're the leader. Have a plan. Uh, eat the kitchen time and leave us alone. Great. Now we can count the seconds till we die. This is all your fault, Molly, making me feel like some big man who's going to save the world. But I'm not a big man and I can't save anything. Not a good time for a hissy, Peter. You failed, so try again. That's what my father always says. Then why can't he come and save us? Oh, I should have given the trunk to my father. Then he'd have all the star stuff and... Molly, you idiot! She's cracking up. No, maybe she has a plan. I do, I do have a plan. Eyes, look at the eyes! This amulet is my plan. The star stuff inside is my plan. Now, are you with this boy, or is it sulk and die? I'm with you, I'm with you. Good. It's a better team with you on it, Peter. It's coming! Quick, get him to open wide. Tasty boy, fresh today, come and get it! Okay, now duck! The ringing of bells fill the air, and Mr. Grin begins to coo and gurgle. And growl. Bigger every second. Giant mouth. Giant teeth. Giant appetite. Until the crocodile breaks out of his bamboo enclosure. An airborne leviathan. So basically I'm thinking, let's... Get out of here! Those dirty, filthy, rotten, stinking English. They ruin bedtime stories. English ruin everything. And why they make Mr. Grin so big. Catch and kill them, mighty father. Yes, but leave Peter Boy and Miss Squid Poop for me. Then fighting pawn will butterfly and deep fat fry. Scampy! Butterfly and deep fat fry. 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 Oh, set me down, you dozy prat. I can't possibly go another step. <sighs> that trunk is hard to find, Captain. So it is. Elusive as the melody in a Philip Glass opera. Rest yourself a while, smeal track your treasure solo. Negaroni. We'll trick the puling spawn and make them bring it hither. But how to do it? How to smoke them out? We could lure them, Captain. Lure them, you say? Stupid idea, Smee, stupid, stupid. Oh, no, no, yes, down here to the butch. Beach, beach. In which case we shall need... A magnet! A really big one. That'll attract them down to the beach. And Smee, the... Smee, I know your heart's in the right place, but... <laughs> Smee, you've been hitting the three bean couscous again? <laughs> <laughs> Twere and I, Captain. Wait, I've got it. Oh, Captain. A, lucky for me, you saved the ukulele. Captain Stan. A siren song is what we need, Smee. And you will be our luscious siren. Oh, big cock. He's chewing all the scenery, sir. Not in my scene, he ain't. Spare me the theatrics, you reptilian ham. <laughs> oh, abandoned spleen. Scene. Scene. Abandoned scene. scene. <laughs> Grab anything that looks like it'll float. We're getting out of here. Now, first, take me to the trunk. Remember the mission? I get the trunk. The trunk is safe. What we need is a raft. It's not your decision, Peter. Protect the trunk. That's 
The mission. It's always got to be about you, doesn't it? What's that? <gasps> oh, it's Daddy. He's signaling me all the way from the Wasp. What's it mean? Um, I think he's using Norse code. It's Norse code, everyone. I think you mean Morse code. Not Morse code. Norse code, the ancient Viking signaling system. That's ridiculous. What's he saying? Um, unless I miss my guess, he's saying, Ungetsi Molly Bligen Torin, that's take Molly to the trunk, Ungetsi Molly Bligen Bella High Water, that's remember the mission. Very convenient. Ungetsi Bligen Torin Torin, keep the motor cooking, Undaka Papa, love, daddy. Women are tricky, man. I feel kind of stupid not knowing Norwegian. Well, it isn't. It isn't a contest, though. If it were, I'd win. And the running, you're really fast. Well, you're the better leader. Really? No. Come on, get me to the trunk. We're almost there. But... Butterfly and deep fat rat. Butterfly and deep fat rat. The mollusks. The, the mollusks. The mollusks. We'll have to outrun them. I'll distract them. Sea princess, that's the sound of a true leader. I'm not leaving you. Why? Afraid I'll beat you to the top? As if. <laughs> Bravo, Peter. Come and get me, mollusks. Bounding through the jungle and up the mountain, Peter's only thoughts are about running the natives. Try and catch me, fighting prawn. And the faster he runs, the further he gets. From the terrible beatings. The boarded up garrets. The smell and the filth and the dark of the cave. And the more that he runs, the more that he smiles. From saving the others. And being a leader. So panting and jumping and practically flying, Peter feels something entirely new. Alive! And all of a sudden, surrounding his head. Get out of my way, bird. I can't see where I'm going. That's when Peter misses a ledge and falls. Molly! Down and down he bumps and bruises, leaving the natives with no one left to chase. Banging and buffeting. Down a deep crevice as gravity beckons. Crooking her finger and winking her eye, and Peter falling for her big time. And rushing up to meet him is a solid sheet of glass! Splash! His brutal fall is broken. And not his neck. And not by glass at all. But by a shimmering lake of golden water, far, far underground. He should have been drowning, should have been afraid. But he was neither drowning nor afraid. Peter bobbed to the surface, safe as you please, and began to get his bearings. The water was thick like oil, and full of light too, and warm like a rich man's bath. And looking down at Peter was... A mermaid! Well, well, nice of you to drop in. I'm teacher, that's what I'm called, and yes, I know your name is Peter. I know a lot of things. Where am I? In a hurry. That's right, I was running from... The Mollusk natives. Well, they were trying to kill us, and we just wanted to get home. Yeah, life is complicated. Now, Peter, I know what you're thinking, and you don't need the wasp, and you do not need that trunk. All you need is... Star stuff. But how did you know about... Listen to teacher. When the trunk fell into the water and the water washed into the trunk and then the waves rushed into the trunk and in the wake of the trunk was the fish and then what happened after that was... But the water. how did you know about... Don't interrupt me, please. So then the water turned the fish with the magic of the star stuff. So you used to be a fish? Scotch salmon, actually. This is way cooler, FYI. <laughs> Anywho, so it can change you too, did I mention? It makes you what you want to be. But I just want to be a boy. Couldn't I just be a boy for a while? Well, I suppose. Um, but all you have to do is you sit in it, and then it just, it just happens. It just changes you. It's really beautiful. You can fly like you always dreamed. Could I even find a home? A family, actually. But if you're going to find a family, you're going to need something. A name. Instead of Peter. In addition to a family name. And we've picked out a good one, haven't we? Pan. What's your name, boy? I'm Peter. Pan. Pan? You mean like in the kitchen? I mean two things, actually. 
Fun and frolic and anarchy and mischief. All the things a boy likes to do. Fun, okay. I'm Peter Pan. You are too cute and you're getting it already. But you said it means two things. What's the second thing? Um, shouldn't you be in a hurry? Don't you have to beat Molly to the trunk? Molly. The trunk. <laughs> Victory, yes. We've beaten to the top. I'll make that very clear when he gets here. If he gets here. Of course he'll get here, he has to. Face facts, Molly. The natives got him, and I feel terrible. We all feel terrible. But now that Peter's out of the running, we can finally distinguish for, what a better word, one might deem, leadership. <laughs> Look, a flying tomato. Say what? That red dot in the horizon? this wreckage, Romeo, and make it fast. Whoa, you're a genius, Betty. I know it, Alpha, I know it, Alfie. We who are vast behind. You betcha, you betcha. Let's it keep it going, gotta make it. Woo! <laughs> oh, the safe, that's good. I wish Peter were here. Oh, but the mission comes fast. Let's get the trunk going, now move it. That night that Ted and Prentice spent dragging the trunk down the mountain was worse than any at the orphanage. Because the rain isn't like the rain in England. It falls like stones and hurts your head. And you can't see because there's trees. In front of trees. Surrounded by trees. And you can't breathe. And the beetles. Flying. Crawling. Sticky. Crunchy. And they're in your mouth. And up your nose. And down your front. So you take cover and wait out the storm. But you can forget about sleep because it's way too scary out there, and you still have to reach the beach. Oh, I said forget about sleep. Teddy. He's back out. Oh, Peter! Peter, I thought... The most amazing thing happened. You wouldn't believe it. I, I saw... Right, well, good to see you, Peter. Shall we wake the boys? Leave him be. Been kind of a long day. Just us, then? Yeah, just us. We should open the trunk. Make sure the star stuff's oh, safe. Oh, no, that won't be necessary. But I want to sit in the star stuff. Uh, very dangerous. You're exposing yourself to way too much of it. I don't care. Well, I do. I was so worried. I told them you'd come. We waited and we waited. Oh, and then it started raining in the dark and... Oh, I was just so worried, Peter. I... I'm here. Do you think I've changed? Your dad's here. So, um... I've been meaning to ask you about the, um, the... The what? The, the, you know, the kiss. What kiss? The kiss, the one you gave me. Oh, the kiss. What kiss, she says. Uh, well, what about it? It's just nobody's ever wanted to kiss me before, that's wanted all. Wanted to? I didn't want to. We were about to be eaten alive, and I just... I mean, I was just standing there, and then you grabbed me. Oh, for heaven's sake, such a fuss. Didn't you like it? No, it, it was... You didn't like it. And now you're telling me you didn't like it. Unbelievable! I'm not saying I didn't like it. Mmm. Pork. <laughs> then what are you saying? I guess I'm saying... I guess I'm asking... You stop that right now. I won't answer any such question. You're inclining towards the sentimental, and that's all well and good for a boy. Inclining toward what? But the fact is, we girls can't afford to be sentimental. We must instead be strong. And when I marry... Marry? I'm... Whoa, whoa, whoa. You thought I was asking you to... Not you, you swat. Ugh, the ego. And when I marry, I shall make it very clear to this person that sentimentality is not on the calendar. He shall have to lump it or leave it. And if he shall leave it, I'll pin my hair back and volunteer weeks at hospital, and I'll have a good old dog, and I'll love what's for their own sake, like Hyacinth and Piccadilly and Onyx, and be part of a different sort of family, you know, one with friends. Even if, in the face of danger, I may have... Wanted to? <laughs> I didn't say that. Got it. Good. Wow. You know... Now that you're here, I might just rest my eyes for a little. No, Molly, no. Lita has to be a...
was Peter. The mollusk got him, remember? Is that the sun? What's for breakfast? <coughs> Ow. <laughs> But if you can see the sun... If you can even see the sky at all, then that means... Oh, we must be near the beach. Come on, boys, we made it. Come. <laughs> Come to me. Ye shipped wrecked sailors, closer now, ye wave-tossed whalers. Whoa, whoa. <laughs> Sailor boy, keep sailing near me, closer now, so you can hear me. As your ship starts to fail, from your deck for a sec, you can see my love. No, 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 no. The object is to lure him me, not send him into psychoanalysis. <laughs> no, simple is best. We go with plan B, the poison fruit cake. We'll take more breath. Come, empty beach, empty morsel. Perhaps a note. Feel free to dig in. They eat it and they die. They come, Captain! Let's kill us and kill us, me. So nasty, so very nasty! So hungry, so very hungry. There's a longboat! But where's Daddy? Oh my gosh, yes! Teddy, Aww. no! You're black stash! My father will have your guts for gutters. You should be timbers. Plan C, me. Poison fruit cake bread. That was plan B, me. Get rid of it. Wait, just a sliver. Too lazy, baby. Plan C. Oh, 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 oh. Heavens. Molly. Miss Bumbrick. Oh, Miss Bumbrick. Bum broken, more like it. These, these ruffians manhandled us, but Alf was so heroic. Ruffians? I say, madam, we are no ruffians. Why, we've never even been to Ruffia. <laughs> you know, I don't really even care what you are. What am I? Blackstash! Stay right where you are, and I'll make sure it goes well for you with my father. Your daddy's got a brown theory. And there's more of us than there are of you. And there's more of us than anybody. Prosciutto! Ooh. Daddy! Captain Scott, not you two! No English move. Ronnie? Be Ronnie, is that you? Betty? The mistress wants more of your manicotti. And a pasta for Zool. To make you drool. Oh, Betty Bumbrick, it's you! This woman only English kind to me when I was kitchen slave. Brawny, be a dearie and let Lord Asta loose. You are English, so I will choose my words carefully. No. <laughs> but Brawny! You English invade our island. Now nature's laws are all focaccia. Considering the content of this trunk, your highness, um, release my father and we'll say it safely off the island. Nature restored. Mollusks live happily ever after. Happily ever after my kebab. You, Katie Tuck, bring the trunk here or I cut the savage's throat. That's a terrible decision. I have a sacred duty. Keep your time, I'll count to three. Three. Three, three, three. What is that, an, an echo? Echo, echo, echo. Oh, what an excellent effect. The stash is cunning. Cunning, cunning. The stash is beguiling. Guiling, guiling. The stash is supreme. I don't think so. <gasps> you. Me. Peter. Pan. He's alive. We're saved. Dressed in parry, Peter. Here we are now at the belly of the beast. Teddy, throw it. Yo, think fast. 
Really? After all that? Prentice? Prentice? What am I doing? Please don't hurt me. I'm not responsible. I'm just a nauseous little kid. <laughs> Is he calling? Seriously? Ah! Yes. Next. Yeah! Oh, look, he knew a baby koala. A koala? Oh, they're just so ah! unfair. Say your goodbyes, my dear. Wait, don't you want the trunk? Peter, no. Gotta save mother. She's more important than some trunk. Even if we never get home. Ugh, are we quite done with the hugging and the learning? Decision. It's a better world with you in it, Molly. No. Huh. Did you see that, Smee? Did you note it? Genuine, heroic, sacrifice. Inspiring, Captain. I've got goose flesh all over. <laughs> Force me. How unprofitable am I seeing from the deck of the HMS Scenic? Here, lad. Take your lady and live another day. Oh, my first ever mission, and I've wrecked it. Now, open it, Smee. Open it, elaborate. It. 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 I don't like it. Bullocks, it. <laughs> Do you detect a pattern here? Tell me, the linguists among you. It's empty, Captain. The truck's empty. So it is. Clean as the sheets in a hospital. Empty? It can't be empty. You mean. All this time, where's, where's my treasure? treasure? The seawater. The seawater must have gotten in and dissolved it. Moose nuggets, gold and diamonds don't dissolve. Oh, but star stuff does. Isn't that right, Daddy? Starbucks? Starbucks? What's a Starbucks? Doesn't matter now. <laughs> Nobody gets his hands on it. Nobody gets what he wants. Oh, enough of this conversation. Why, I hate, I hate, I hate. Oh. Oh. Sir? <laughs> As you are. Smee, sir, your right hand man. Not anymore, Smee, not anymore. Thanks a no small part to this. <gasps> oh, cap, my cap. Fuck it out, tear, Smee. A pine if you would. What am I to do now? I'm stumped, sir. <laughs> Stop. You're stumped. It's all about you, isn't it? Self, yourself, self. Not me, sir, not me. Oh, then kindly retrieve it. I'm not leaving me hand behind for these children to paw. Retrieved, sir. <laughs> you! You sacrifice willingly for the sake of forgive. Girl! Girl. And that was majestic. You picked the poet in me, Pam. What say you we forge a forger? Forge a merger. Thank you, Smee. Picture it, Peter. If I was forever, I could say that never end them. I'm talking books, movies, Broadway. But you just tried to kill me. Oh, don't you get it, Pete? You're my hero. Me? You're the yin to me yang. The simi to me calling. Darn it, boy, you're the wind beneath my clipped wing. Gee, I hadn't really... Thanks to you, Hanra born. The complete villain. Oh, it's sublime. Enemies will be... Forget gold and diamonds. Time. Time will be our treasure. We'll fight for all eternity. We's a couple now, boo. <laughs> Only if my friends go free. Oh, bravo, bravissimo! Give the pan a round of... It's me, it's me. <laughs> Get that out of here! This is your doing, you loathsome pan. You single-handedly rendered me single-handed. You cut your hand off, not me. Oh, pity, the child who lives in a fact-based world. You may think my ship has sailed, but I have an model of options at my former fingertips. Perhaps I'll never be a concert violinist or a reliable juggler, but I can still win Wimbledon, and I can still destroy you. You've made your bed, Pan. Go on, get the hook. <laughs> North, northwest, a giant brook crouching. Track for another snack. I'm 
stage and me steal your snuggle tooth show off? Just not your day, sir. Wait! I can use a killer cock on my crew. Bring the beast along. How am I to learn, sir? The hand, you fool. Give him the hand. Wait! Best make it last. Just give him the finger. I do, Pan, but believe this. Wherever you call home, keep your back to the wall. For when you least expect it, there I'll be. The stash, right under your nose. <laughs> Clap if you believe. Oh, Daddy, thank goodness you're safe. Molly, my Molly. <laughs> Molly. Molly. Boy, you do good, son. Fighting prawn, honor that. Boy shall wear hat of hero, and fighting prawn will bend mollusk law. Allow all English to leave island. And you, be good to Betty, or I'll serve you up al dente. Don't worry, your prawnness. Me and Mrs. B have made arrangements. I got down on bended knee, and Mrs. B said, You betcha. Betty's bound for bridal bliss. The HMS bomb break may have a few barnacles on her bum, but Alf will scrape them right oh, off. Oh, oh dearie, oh dearie, oh dearie. No, Alf. TTFN. Ta-ta for now. Or is it our language? Tiramisu. 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 Landlord's born. It's back to England. Then I set my sights on the South Pole. The Antarctic? Well, my name's not Robert Falcon Scott. Trunk to the longboat. Oh, Captain, good luck. Don't let the Norwegians beat you to it. Nobody beats the British little girl. Rule Britannia. Not a little girl, a full-fledged star catcher. Full-fledged star catcher? Just like my wonderful father. She deserves it, sir. Molly's the real hero. <laughs> Thanks, Peter. Mission fulfilled. We're heading home. And we'll take them with us, right? The boys will come home with us, of course. Mother! I told you. And teacher said all I needed to get home was star stuff. Ha! Wrong. Who? Who's teacher? This tricked out mermaid. Well, she was a fish, but then she swam in the grotto and now we're going home. Wait, what grotto? The grotto with the golden water. Did you go in that water? Yeah, it was so nice. All warm and tingly. Star stuff? And he soaked in it. We can't do this. But the star stuff already dissolved in the waves. In the waves that turn fish into mermaids. I'm sorry, Peter. We can't take you with us. Why? What did I do? <laughs> there, you see? Well, we don't know what he is or what he wants to be. I just want to be a boy. Couldn't I just be a boy for a while? With star stuff, a while could mean a very long time. But, but I'll be good, I promise. The boy deserves a home. Well, of course he does, but... Wait, Leonard, old man, you're getting slow. Peter, what if your mermaid was right? She wasn't right and neither are you. Grown-ups always lie. They lie and then they leave. I thought she said star stuff was all you needed to get home. But I'm still here. Precisely. Did she say anything else? She said I needed a family name, so she gave me one. Pan. Pan, as in all. Your family name, understand? <sighs> Are the ants on the beach? Are the birds in the air? Are the mermaids, the pirates, the mollusks? Oh, and the boys too, of course. Especially the boys. The whole island. They're all your family. And how does that make you feel? Like, like I'm finally out of the dark. There's a name for that feeling, Peter. Home! And here you are. And here he'll stay. Yeah, me too, totally. Count me in. You didn't want to be alone, did ya? Oh, well, this is just unacceptable. We asked us do not to leave boys behind. Hey, it's a stupid bird again. What do you want? Leave me alone! Stop. Don't hurt that bird. You're going to need something to protect you. Now, it seems to me, if we take the last of the star stuff, like so, and stir vigorously, I think it's anti-clockwise. Peter, lend a hand with the meringue. Hey, the hat's getting all, all, all warm and tingly, just like... And so... 
wizard. Oh, my tap. Come here, you. I can totally do that trick. Teddy, don't eat it! <laughs> nice to know I've still got it. If you really wanted to protect him, you'd take him with us. Time's going up, my lord. I'm afraid it's time for goodbyes. Be a woman, okay. This is my address in London. You don't have to write to me every day or anything, just when you feel like it. Well, you know my address, Morley Island. <laughs> Mollusk Island, you mean? Or maybe I'll call it Neverland, you know? Do you remember? Do you remember? Molly a Hero, wear it when you get home. Molly, now the tide won't wait. Come on, five more minutes, please. Tell me a bedtime story, Molly. Tell me, tell me. There'll be other tides, won't there? See, she wants to stay. She can't. But soon, Peter. I know you don't want to leave, but, or her to leave, but soon you'll forget, and it won't hurt anymore. No, it's supposed to hurt. That's how you know it meant something. You're not going to forget anything. This isn't the end. You're going to remember every single detail. And you're the better leader. Really? No. <laughs> <laughs> you won't stay mad at me forever, will you? Go on, get lost. I'm bound to grow up, see? What will we do? Be friends? In a year, that'd be hard. In five years, that'd be silly. And in 20 years, well, that'd just be sad. You sound older already. The thing you did, against impossible odds, it's what the two of you will always have. The thing we did? Against impossible odds. Yes, I wanted to. And then, as promised, he began to forget and stayed right where he was. The outsider. Truth her word, Molly would remember everything until one night, many years later, she'd watch Peter fly off with her own daughter in tow. And this grown up Molly, with her old Nana, the good old dog, would tend to her children. So don't worry, dear Nana. I always hoped that if Peter should come to visit, my daughter would take my place. And once Wendy grows up... I hope she will have a little girl. A little girl who will go off and turn. So don't worry, dear Nana. And maybe go on and on as long as children are young and innocent. And rude and juvenile and heartless. Past all of the jostles of life. Till we fly back home. Home? Help, that bird bell thing is after us again. Keep it away, it's oh. trying to eat my brain. Uh, over here, I know what you want. Wait, I think it's trying to tell us something. I think it wants us to race down to the beach. Hey, look, Stash Grotto. cut up in the pineapple. Grotto, the fairy misspoke. But look, Stash cut up in the pineapple. Mm. It's, hard to, it's hard to believe you're still single. But how can I race down to the beach if I don't run? Whoa, 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 I can what? What'd she say? What'd she say? To have faith is to have wings. Wait a minute, did you say grotto? How'd you like to just be boys for a while? The star stuff water can do that? It makes you what you want to be. A lawyer! <laughs> Guys, this is gonna be one awfully big adventure. All right, you said it. Ready? Ready. Ready. Set. 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 Go.